Hey guys, this is Jessica. Welcome back to my channel, The Retro Farmhouse. I am doing a DIY project today where I take some items that are not really conventionary items to use for garden planters and I turn those into things that I'm going to plant some flowers in for my garden. If you guys haven't seen some of my garden tours, I'll link that up here. Um, go check it out. We have a new, nice uh, bigger garden this year where we have some in-ground, um, I'm sorry, above-ground garden beds that we've been working on. And um, I kept thinking, you know, I want to add more flowers to kind of help pollinate uh, some of the vegetables and things that we are growing. But I really didn't want to go out and spend a whole lot of money on some plant containers. So I wanted to see what I could do uh, with some items that I either had around or maybe some items that I found th from the thrift store. So I hope this gives you guys some inspiration um, for some projects that you might be working on. And uh, I'll, let's go ahead and get started on today's project. So in this first project, I'm just taking an old hose and I'm kind of winding that up on itself to where it overlaps. And then I'm using a lot of these little zip ties to kind of connect that together. You could start at the bottom and kind of do a bottom piece by doing kind of a pinwheel and, and doing it that way. But I knew I was gonna just take a uh, plastic pot that I already had and kind of set that down in there. So I'm kind of using this garden hose as a little decorative cover but most certainly you could do this um, in a basket style I've seen that style done on Pinterest many times as I go up onto my next layer I'm just gonna set that right up on top and I'm going to do the same thing um, all the way around until I get to the second top here and then I'm going to thread the zip ties in through these two and connect it here So some other things that I have picked up from local thrift stores or just some of my antique stores that I like to use or I'm going to try to use this year for planters is um, a lot of metal items. They work pretty well. You can drill holes into the bottom of them. Will they last you a lifetime? No, but they will last quite a, quite a bit of time um, before they rust out on the bottom. Um, I found this cute little metal watering can. I think I got this for a couple of dollars and um, somebody already painted it a really cute green. I don't think I'm gonna do anything different with that, but I'm gonna go ahead and just drill in the bottom here and that'll be a, a nice little planter that I can do from the outside and that's a uh, little garden material, so that'll look really neat. A lot of the things that inspired me is, I, I went to Tractor Supply recently and they have all these really cute chicken feeder planters and little barrel planters and all this stuff. And um, occasionally I do pick up those here and there if they go on sale, but I was trying to think outside of the box and think what else I could make these little decorative planters for my garden. So um, another one I picked up, I think I got this one for, at Goodwill for 99 cents. It's a little metal planter. I have some boards out there in my garden that I've been hanging a few little planters on and I can do the same thing with this one. I can drill some holes in the bottom of this with a drill bit for metal. I can, I can just hang that on top of a uh, one of the little pieces of wood that I have. And then this one I found, I have to clean it up a little bit, but this is, I guess people would use this for like an ice bucket or something like that. You've probably seen on some of my other craft videos, I'll link this one up here. I did one similar where I had one that I used under the carport area that doesn't get much rain on it. And I went and I did the, the little galvanized technique on that one. I'm not gonna do that on this one because out there it has a lot of elements where it's got rain and, and different weather um, that we get. So that wouldn't really hold up to that. But I'm just gonna kinda go ahead and clean this up as is. I like the red color and I'll do the same thing. I'll drill some holes into the bottom of it and I'll be able to plant my plants in this. And I highly recommend get some Goo Gone if you are doing any kind of DIY projects. This works on everything. I've had the same bottle forever. It only takes a little bit. Um, anything with like citrus oil or like orange oil or even lemon oil, if you have essential oils, that works really well too. This one I only got for about $2. It looks like it had some kind of tape on it or something like that. And uh, the Goo Gone is working really, really well to get that off. It has a few dents in it. I don't, don't really mind that, but I figured it would look nice as like a little farm looking pail or 
um, one of those uh, old galvanized bathtubs that you see uh, kind of reminded me of that, so I thought that it would be good to use as a planter. So to drill my holes in the metal, I like to use uh, this driving bit um, set. This is Ryobi. I'm sure you can get this in a lot of different brands, but this is the one that I like. I use this all the time. They have multiple ones that do wood, metal, um, concrete, anything like that. I think it's really beneficial to have this in your little DIY kit. And uh, I've used this for a ton of things. We actually have two of these, one for outdoors and one for indoors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna attach my bit here onto my drill and then I'm just going to drill a few holes in some of my metal canisters. This is another little bucket that I got for 75 cents from the thrift store. Now the flat ones are easy to drill through, but ones like this that you can't turn upside down because it has another object on it, I just get like a scrap piece of wood, set that on top, and then I'll have something to drill down in through when I go through here and it'll hit the bottom and not hit like my flooring or anything that I'm working on. it made some nice little drainage holes on the bottom. So another item that I found that I want to try to use, if you've seen some of my previous videos before, um, we keep gradually replacing the lights in our 1970s house and I have these globes. They're kind of neat looking but I, I keep trying to find ideas to reuse them. Um, I'll put the link up here of another video that I used to make something out of these but I want to also make these out of a plant holder. Um, I think I'm going to maybe build a base that this can sit down into. That way I can put this on the ground and it can um, sit upright. I do know that obviously there's no way that I can do any kind of drainage holes in this unless I have something that drills through glass. And I'm just not going to go to all that trouble. So I'll either try to plant something in here that is okay um, with not having much drainage or just be very cautious about watering it. But I think I'm going to try to build a holder to put this in so that way I could utilize this as well. So I have some of these scrap pieces of wood. I'm gonna use these to make my little holder here and then maybe stain that and put this together with some finishing nails. From all things at once without thinking twice. And I knew it would catch up and that we would be the ones left behind. So, to make the stand, I've cut four equal pieces and then one other piece to go across the way. So, what I mean by that is I'm taking here two pieces and I'm going to glue that and then just use my nail gun here to glue. Uh, an H I guess you could say and then I'm gonna take a cross piece and go across and measure that and and put that together so it may have seen a lot of these type of plant stands in Target or different places like that I'm just making this one out of some scrap wood that I have time has gone and I grew up I somehow made it through without Losing sight, mm -hmm. and I still wonder where you are, and if you found a way out from the dark. The stories I've been told they never seem to leave my mind. Mm -hmm. This road that I am on. Okay, so now I have my first part put together. And in order to make like the cross brace here, I'm gonna have to make two separate pieces and then put that together. 
So in order to do that, I'll just measure what the length of this one was and then what the width of it is and then just subtract that, divide that by two and then that'll be what the width needs to be going this way. So I'll have kind of a cross piece and then more of these going up on the other sides. Okay, so I took both of those cross pieces and I just put them on either side, measuring it in the middle. And then I took this clamp and I put that on there after I added some wood glue. And I'm just gonna take this, it was an L bracket, but I just literally flattened it um, on the ground. I don't have any flat ones, but you can get these at any hardware store that are actually just long flat black, long flat brackets. But again, I just did the corner one, so, um, we had some of those on hand and I just flattened that to make that fit, fit better. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to go over to my side pieces here and I'm just gonna screw that in and that's gonna stabilize this. I'm gonna leave this clamp on so that this um, holds really well and has time for the wood glue to dry. For a discounted price, I'm able to get some really nice flowers and just with a little TLC, I'm able to bring a lot of those back to life and I haven't had to spend a whole lot of these on the blooms. Now, granted, you don't really get to pick which ones that they have uh, that day, but I mean, these are zinnias. I got a bunch of zinnias. They usually always have marigolds, um, which are some of my uh, flowers that I love. So any of those will work great.